Good afternoon, student. Architecture 113, International Building Code. Last time, I show you um, for the section on fire and smoke protection feature number one. Now we continue with that from fire and smoke protection feature number two. This one just um, continue with last one we do. So um, you can combine both of them for fire smoke protection feature. This is very important, so that's why we have two chapters talk about that, about fire and the smoke protection. If you have property, you have building, and fire and smoke protection is one of very special, very special structural um, park you need to learn and you need to uh, protect for the wall, ceiling, or floor, or any from petition for the building or from properties. So it's safe for everyone in case the fire happen and we have some kind like limit or you can do reduce the speed from fire or the smoke can get out, you know, expand outside vertical horizontal. So that's why we have two chapters to talk about fire and the smoke protection. <coughs> Uh, in the key point, this one you can learn about the firewall, you learn about the smoke detector, uh, petition, fire petition, or how do you calculate for opening in the firewall, or fire protection, and what kind of material, combustible or non-combustible, what type of construction between building and building, and where you use it. So it cover from this part, they have a lot of um, examples, so you can see that, and after that you can learn why we need to design that one for the firewall, why you design for fire petition, and why you need to do for uh, on up assembly from fire protection. So basically in the building, you usually hear to talk about the firewall. And after that, you have the fire rays for the ceiling or the floor or, you know, on of the structural member. So basically, if you see one building, they need some wall. They need to design for fire protection or some ceiling on the floor, same thing. Or which one we need to use for material, for non-combustible or combustible. Or what building you need to use for the sprinkler system or not need to use the sprinkler system. So in the book, for the code book, they separate that for many chapters. So you need to uh, read on of the chapter for make sure that before you start to design, you should make sense. That's which one you need to design for um, firewall, fire protection member, or sprinkler system, or not sprinkler system, or what, how many hours for the member you want to do for fire protection. So on of the chapter from uh, not all, but a lot of the chapter in the code book, they share with you about this case. So in here, if you can see that, you can see um, this is the building A and building B. Usually two building, maybe they have different kind from the type of construction or the group, the occupancy group. So that's why between them, building A and building B, if they have different kind from the occupancy group and they need the firewall, between them, they need the firewall. The firewall, the function from the firewall is make um, to limit or to reduce for the fire uh, expand from this building to another building. And how about inside from the building? If you have few opening, door or the window or opening, and you can see that's how you need to design for the opening. Usually, they measure the length from the wall. For example, this is the firewall. And the length from the wall with the length from each opening. For example, right here, you have two opening A and B. So you plus together from the length from A, the length from B, plus together, it should be smaller than 25% from the X. That means the total length from the firewall. That's the rule. So if you want to design opening, you make sure that you need to have the land A plus land B smaller than 25% from total land. That's the X1. 
that's the home building. And if you have two buildings together, for building A, building B, and they have different kind from the occupancy group, and you need to design one of the firewall between them. And you look on the top one, it's darker from the lower. This one, you call that the parapet. That means the outside external wall outside from the building is made for again it's made for reduce for the fire spread from this building to another building or inside from the building so now if you see like this like I told you this they call that the parapet and they usually design extend from minimum 18 outside from the wall if you have exterior wall they say outside for minimum 18 inches and on the top one this can be three feet high from this one and the function from the parapet is it makes for the um, the fire spread in lower from building to building and inside from building and if you look at one section from the step building that's mean many level from the building you see that the lower roof and upper one between them you should minimum one hour construction for the full high wall or 15 above from this one to this one 15 feet above that means different between level is 15 feet or you need to do minimum one hour construction for the material on this one. And if you have the opening on that area, you need minimum three over four hour five assemblies. That means on up the window right here for openings window, you need to use for the material for three, four hour five assembly. How about the lower? If you use the firewall, and you remember the lower right here and on the top this one you can call that's the top from the first level but it's in the floor from the second one and you up more 30 inches minimum that's the, the firewall should be that's the rule and the code they show you like that so now how about inside if you look at inside vertical from one of um, the building you can see that's on the top one on horizontal assembly you need fire resistant choice system the choice one right here and if you have the duct system mechanical and you need the fire damper around that's the duct one if you have the pipes in there and you need through penetration fire stop system around the pipe and you have the fire barrier wall this is the vertical you see that the fire barrier wall and if you have some kind like horizontal park go through to the fire barrier wall they need like that and if you have the door or the, the window opening and you need fire door assembly that means they need at least minimum with the fire barrier wall fire rate okay that's one example for vertical section from the building so now if you have few of the occupant roof is less than 12,000 square feet and they close together like that it is smaller than 12,000 square feet and it's smaller than or smaller than 300 occupants that means maximum people inside from the building and you see three building together like that and between them you see the group A occupancy E you know that's for education and you need to be minimum two hour five barrier from the table right here they show that it should be minimum two hour you see that this is the wall between this building to another buildings and it's on group E and you need two hour how do you know that two hour three hour one hour this is the table 707 3.10 they show you how about occupancy group and after that how many hours you need to design for the wall between them for example you have x1 and x2 x1 they hazardous and x2 a hazardous too and you have four hours so much danger so that's why you need hazardous is some kind like um, the, the the occupancy group is so um, hard to design so that's why you need four hours for five reason and if you have f1 x3 or s1 storage factory and hazard three you need three hour e you look at this e like before you have example from e building and you can see that a b e f2 h4 x5 i m r and f2 you need two hour so you see this is two hour because this belong to that group and you we need one hour you for example you have a garage 
you know, one hour between garage and the other room. So that's one example like that. And uh, one more time, when you do the section for uh, one building and you see this is the floor, this is the roof one, or the, the floor or the deck from the second roof, and you can see that between this is the wall, and you call that the fire barrier. The fire barrier, that means vertical wall, it's make special material for make sure that it's reduced or it's, it's uh, keep the limit from the expand from the fire from this bay to another space so it's go from the floor up to the roof one so you can see that's often here this is continuous through concealed space you have this one up there with the wall and this one if you have one wall fire berry wall but you have many opening for example you have the steel open door you have the open window and after that you have the solid door and to make sure that's on off on off the land from the opening for example you call this l1 l2 l3 l4 stand for on of the opening from this one when you add together it should be smaller than 25 percent from total land from the barrier wall like before you share with the, I mean on last one we see one example from that one now just repeat but after that you need to know that for the steel fire door this one it should be smaller than 156 square feet maximum you cannot do bigger than 156 square feet for the fire opening the steel fire opening door and total on of them should be smaller than 25% from total land from the barrier wall. That's the rule. That's the code you need to follow. This is another section. If you see one uh, fire resistance protection outside here, that both sides, they need to um, have either 5, five over 8 chip some X bore for both sides from the room and another room, and this is the corridor between them so you need both sides either fire resistant protection and after that on the top one from the ceiling you need the ceiling radiation damper required between some duct you need to have the damper on there this is the duct system so you need damper and this is one hour system assembly all of the material is one hour and after that the fire Petition to be secure attached to the ceiling. That's mean from here up to the ceiling. This one will be secure from the room to the room in the corner. And if you have the five petition and between them the ceiling and the floor, you have something and to connect between this one, you should be use the combustible contraction in review. You need to have the five blocking or the trap stopping. And you need to do this one qualify for a fire rate. The, because this is the fire resistant rate for floor and roofing. So that means on material between them should be um, fire resistant. So now, in case if you have the fire sprinkler system inside from the building, you can reduce from the hour. For example, you have two or three hours of fire resistant rates in the wall. But if you have sprinkler system, you can reduce that into one or one and a half hour fire rate system wall. In this one is some of uh, the smoke barrier. Smoke barrier is, um, um, it can be vertical or horizontal. It just, the function is keep the smoke not spread out to another area. So that's why either you can do in the vertical or horizontal between the, uh, the wall or the ceiling for make sure that's on of the smoke, it cannot spread out to another room. This is one example. You can see that's the wall right here, a smoke partition. And the opening right here, you see that's the solid door, the window and opening. The window should be... Um, this the material is smoke detection and after that the door we have the louver uh, in the door so that's why basically on the smoke partition and on of the opening on there should be qualified with the condition from the smoke detector 
Another example, you can see, uh, for example, you have this is the residential house, and you can see from the footing, this is the rolling space, that means very uh, uh, deep footing. And after that, you have the floor, wall, and after that, roof and ceiling. If you have the artist, and you need to over around the artist, we have the fry retardant membranes. Uh, you can um, don't need to do that in case. And this one, if you see the roofing and this is the ceiling, and this is one hour fire resistant ray assembly on up here at the ceiling one, under the roof one and the others. The others maybe you don't need for the, uh, the fire resistant, but the ceiling you need it. And the floor, one hour fire resistant ray assembly. So you can see this is the floor you need it. And under floor, you need. Um, under floor right is you don't need to fire resistant ray but on the top of the flooring you need it ceiling you need it that means between the space for people working activity this in this one house resistant rate okay and on up here for the detail um, chapter you can look for over for uh, sharp and closer for escalator for duct for atrium, for parking garage, or everything, they have special design for fire resistant and uh, smoke detector in there. Okay, so that's a continue with last chapter. Um, I mean, last section. We go before we go fire smoke protecting one. Now we have go over with fire protect section two. Same thing. We have. Study section number six and the 35 question total. I think this one is due for a couple more weeks, but this one we just post it on Happy Light July for in case if you have time, you can go over to review and uh, do if you have time to do first. Okay, thank you for watching uh, this section from 706 and 712 in the book and the textbook International Building Code. And if you open with the section, this one on study companion, it is study section six. Thank you for watching and see you next time.